Welcome, my friends of the interwebs. What you are looking at is a book called Anxiety, Phobias, and Panic. This book was purchased uh, for me by a very good friend who cared deeply about me. Probably about three years ago, maybe four years ago. I, I don't remember now. But uh, <laughs> this is not the kind of book that you buy a friend unless you were very worried about them. And I want to talk about this. This may surprise a lot of people. But before I tell this story, I want to, uh, I want to give mad props to Pete from the Armory Channel uh, for inspiring me to make this video. And at the end of this story, uh, there, may be, um, there may be something in it to, that, that will help uh, those of you who are searching for answers and don't seem to be able to find them. Um, you know, I, I, I realized that it took Pete a lot of balls to, to bring up the fact that he uh, has suffered from and is suffering from panic and, and anxiety and things like that. Uh, because a, a, as, a man, as men, we are both genetically and, I think, by society programmed to not show weakness. And when, when, a man, when a man's willing to talk about uh, such things, it, it shows a lot of character because most of us don't have the balls to do that. And I don't know that I would have ever talked about this had Pete not mentioned that he suffered from this stuff. So thank you, Pete. Okay. Oh, and for those of you who don't know who Pete is, uh, I'll, there'll be a link under this uh, video. Go check him out. He's an awesome guy. All righty. Let me start at the beginning of my issues. <laughs> well, I can't go back. I'm not going to go that far back. All right. <laughs> Let me just go back to the, the beginning of this panic and anxiety thing. Uh, I don't really know that I had any phobias, but I damn sure had anxiety and I damn sure had panic attacks. Okay. So for those of you who have watched my real life videos, you'll be in a lot better shape to understand what's going on here. If you haven't, um, I'll put a link under Pete's uh, link to the real life number one. If you haven't checked it out, because it'll help you understand this. Okay, so I went through the, the ringer with uh, Frito and, and Super Trooper and, and all that madness they had went on, the death threats and, you know, the we're going to burn your house down and shoot you as you ran out of it in the middle of the night and all that crap. I dealt with that. I thought I came through it pretty good, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but at some point, I was starting to feel uneasy. You know, it was a different feeling than I'd ever been used to, you know, because normally in my normal life, I'm very cool, calm and collected. That's just me. Uh, in fact, I've had girlfriends in the past tell me that they thought I had natural Prozac running through my veins. And when I remember dating this one chick, she told me she goes, nothing pisses you off and that pisses me off. I, you know, just to illustrate a point that for the most part, panic and anxiety was never part of my life. So I didn't I didn't understand what was going on. I I just. I just had no clue. And I, but I remember having this feeling of on the edge of fright, on the edge of being scared. And I thought, well, you know what? I got to get out of here. I've just got to. I've got to go north. I've got to go back to Toledo and take a break from this craziness. Now, by this point, the, the, the timber was coming off my property. In fact, uh, Mike Smith of Target Oil and Gas, of course, you know, he's incarcerated in a federal penitentiary now. Just had to throw that in there. Um, he was getting ready to, uh, to drill uh, his first well on, uh, on my property, his first gas and oil well. Gas or oil or hopefully both. We didn't know at the time. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'm going to go home and take a break from this craziness and, uh, and come back for the drilling. Um, which I think was going to be in another couple of weeks. So I remember I went home and now I'd made this trip that my house in Kentucky uh, is about six and a half hours away from my house in Toledo, six and a half to seven hours, depending on traffic and weather and whatnot. And normally I would make this trip, which I'd made a gazillion times. Uh, normally I would make this trip with stopping at a rest stop, maybe once take a piss, you know, um, for the most part, it was a one stop trip for me. And, uh, and you know, it is what it is, eh, you know, but I remember this time I got in my, at that time I was, I was driving that 05 Dodge Ram. And I remember I got in this truck and I started heading north and I'll bet you, well, I, I'll bet you I didn't make it all the way to Corbin before I thought, man, I got to stop. <laughs> and, uh, I stopped at a gas station and, you know, got out of the truck and I walked around. I just felt weird. I felt kind of uneasy. You know, I'm like, shit, and I got a long way to go by this point. You know, I'm not even a half an hour away from my house yet. And I got another over six hours to go. Got back in my truck and I'll never forget this because I literally hit every single rest stop 
on the way from, uh, well, let's say from Corbin, Kentucky to Toledo, Ohio. Uh, every single rest stop I stopped at. Got out of my truck, walked around, took big, deep breaths of air, <sighs> several of them, you know, and I, and I can remember just gripping the wheel of the truck so tight. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is wrong with me? This is just freak. This is weird. You know, and I get back to Toledo and, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you, once I got back to Toledo, to be honest with you, I did start feeling a little bit better. Okay. And this is before I was ever diagnosed with diabetes, by the way. So I did notice that when I would eat things, um, that I would feel kind of sick. I didn't feel right, you know, but I still didn't, you know, I didn't really make the connection of diabetes at the time, but I wasn't feeling good, but I, I, I wasn't as panicky as I was. I thought, well, okay, it all makes sense. You know, I had a bunch of people down in Kentucky that had threatened to kill me. You know, there's bullet holes in my house, you know, and I just, I, I, every night I went to bed, I was surrounded by guns. There was, I don't know how many times I would hear a noise in the middle of the night and I'd come flying out of my bed, you know, with my, you know, 357 in my hand, you know, I mean, it was just one of those things. And I lived like that for months and months. And I thought, well, you know what, you know, I thought maybe it was like battle fatigue, you know, I, I just, you know, I just needed a little R and R. And so that's kind of what I considered at that point to a little R and R, but I didn't have a lot of time to R and R because I had to get back to Kentucky for them to drill that first. Well, and so I did. I remember driving back, it was almost as bad as when I came uh, from, from Kentucky to Toledo. It was literally stopping at every rest stop to walk around, to take deep breaths. It was, it was horrible. So I get back to Kentucky just in time for them to start doing that whole week-long thing of drilling uh, with Bell, Bell County Number 1, which you can find in my real-life videos. So... I would have stayed longer after the drilling, but, you know, my attitude was, I, I just, I need more time away from this place. So I got back in my truck and I went back north and stayed in Toledo. And I was in Toledo for a while. I had to go back and forth a couple of times, but usually it would just be for a couple of days, literally just for a couple of days. And it got, here's the thing, it got so bad that I was actually begging friends of mine in Toledo. It's like, hey, do you want to go to Kentucky for a few days? Because there was things that I had to do, you know. Yeah, it was rough. Um, but then, you know, I mean, I remember the day that I got my first check for uh, for Bell County number one. And I don't, offhand, I can't think of what it was, but a fair amount of money. Plenty of money to keep me going. And I remember thinking, well, not even thinking, this is the way it worked. The timber was to get me to the um, oil and gas. The oil and gas was to get me to the coal. That's the way it was to work. And everything was to be in place. And the timber, although I had to go through some bullshit, uh, it still worked out. I made money on that. Um, and then it looked to be like the oil and gas was going to be plenty of money to get me to the coal. So I remember I, I did, when I got that first check, I actually felt like a lot better. I felt, whew, that's good. But that didn't last long. And the next day I remember, oh, I just started getting panicky again and I felt really uncomfortable. So I go to my doctor. And by the way, <laughs> by this point, you know, I'm already on Google trying to self-diagnose myself, which, by the way, is the worst thing you could ever imagine to do. Don't do that. Don't do it. I spent hours and hours and hours typing in symptoms and this and that, and oh, it, it, it made things worse. It really did. So I go to the doctor. And uh, I tell him, I, in fact, I took a friend with me. I, I, I took a, a, an ex-girlfriend and I said, you got to tell, because she was a nurse. And I said, you got to tell the doctor that, look, I'm not the panicky type, you know, that I'm Mr. Cool. You know, what the, you know, what the hell, there's got to be something wrong with me. So she does. She goes there and she's like, look, doc, I've you know, known this guy for years. And yeah, he's not the type to get all upset about anything. He's very cool. And to see him the way he is now, by the way, she's the same person that bought me this book. Um, she said, is, there's something wrong here. Well, the first thing the good doctor wants to do is, well, of course, he did run some blood, te blood tests and did find out that my blood sugars were barely elevated. Pre-diabetes is what he called it. And he or he prescribed me some, oh, I don't know, some 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 kind of type 2 diabetes medication. I can't remember offhand what it was. But um, but that I, clearly that wasn't the problem. So he, he says to me, he goes, I'd like to put you on this thing called Buse Bar. It's either Buse Bar or Lexapro, one of the two. I don't remember now. Well, you know what? We're almost to 10 minutes. Let me go ahead and stop this here, and I'll come back for a part two. Trust me when I tell you the end results will be worth hearing. So I will see you soon.